Hello everyone, Toby from AbletonDrama.com here. I want to show you a technique how you can automatically select the next scene and have this being set up. So if you're playing live, this becomes much nicer to use session view here. So let me quickly dive in. So if you and we are having the default example set of Ableton Live 12 here, so it's working for 12 and 11 as soon as you can use um, scene follow actions here. So I set up a scene follow action for the first one here. So if we have a look, I'm playing this tune and you can see it's flashing and it's automatically selecting the next scene here because I set this up. So um, it's just a Max for Life device sitting on here and this one is just doing what it should. So if you have a scene follow action playing the next scene, you want the scene after to be selected. Why do you want this? So for example, if you play this scene here, you're starting your song, you're playing live, whatever, you know, and then you're going into the next scene where you might want to loop this. So we are jumping to the next scene now and this is looping. Let's say you do some announcement to the audience or whatever, and then you want to jump to the next scene because you want to decide when to play this and you have to trigger a fire selected scene here. So that's what I'm doing now. So if the singer is ready with uh, his or her announcement, bam, I can trigger the next scene and you can see it's selecting the next scene here automatically. Okay, so Per default, Ableton Live is not able to do this. So if I switch off the device here, you can see I'm playing this tune and when it's jumping to the next scene here after eight bars, that's what I set up in here. Let's have a look. You can see follow action here, um, play next after eight bars. Now the next scene is playing, but which scene is selected? Still my first scene is selected here. So if you are not manually triggering through scenes all the time, you need something to select and to queue up the next scene. And that's what my Max for Life device here is for. So if you have this sitting on a track, you would need a clip because it's observing if a clip is playing and then if a clip is playing, it will select the next scene. So if you don't want it, you can just leave out one MIDI clip here. So you just create a MIDI clip. You can switch the loop off and you would need a MIDI clip on every scene here so that Ableton Live can detect which scene is playing. So this device is a Max for Life device. Max for Life is included in Ableton Live Suite or can be bought as an add-on towards Ableton Live Standard. So as I said this third time now, compatible with Ableton 11, Ableton Live 11 and Ableton Live 12 here. So this device is coming on a donation base. So just follow the link in the video description if you want to check it out, download it. If you want to donate afterwards, it's fine. Okay, so just go for it. So um, just to show you, I'm using a second device here of mine, which is the button control, advanced MIDI control for buttons. And I can set up um, actions here triggering. So I'm running MIDI from this controller directly into the, this track. I can set this up. And the advantage here is I can save this and store this as a preset. So if I always want to use this controller, I can just create a preset here and drag and drop that in. Another advantage of the advanced MIDI control button device here is I could have different presets. So I could have this knob firing selected scene. And I could have, if I'm in a different preset, have this doing completely something else. So I have a lot of uh, global actions I could select from. I can map actions here. So for example, track on and off. I can do use the same button here, just changing the presets. I get up to 128 presets in here. So if you have, and if you are playing with a small controller and some parts of your set, you need something else check out this device because you can set up one button to do 128 different things. You're probably not going to need 128. But you know, if you are um, fond of presets here and just quickly drag and drop those in, obviously you can use the MIDI map menu here if you activate this. And then if you select the play button here, select a MIDI controller, which is set up to um, and if Ableton is activated to receive the MIDI remote in, you can set this up here as well, you know, so I mapped this 
play button play next scene button here which is still the one which is being selected so it wouldn't work without the auto cue stuff one here but just to be fair you can do this this way as well you not necessarily need the advanced midi um, control max for life device here but you can't recall those midi mappings via the midi map menu in other Ableton Live sets. So if you want to set up some global actions and that only works for global actions here, like select next scene, select uh, scene forward. So all the things we got in here, tap, metro on off, transport on off record, all of those are global things. Here, those are things you can set up globally and just recall them in different Ableton Live sets. And that's gonna save you some time. The button advanced, advanced midi control button max for life device there's a link in the video description here that's a separate device than the auto queue the auto queue comes on a donation base as i just said this so just follow the link in the video description download it and you're ready to go to use session view for your live performance